BIOS version is 1.28. Now I believe the latest BIOS version is 2.02. .02. We can update the BIOS right now if we want to. We don't have to. When I build computers, I always like to install the latest BIOS update for my customers because I don't know what the BIOS update's fixing. Let's say that I do not update this BIOS and my customer calls me with a problem. After they've had the computer delivered, I'm now going out on a warranty call. If the resolution to the customer's problem is resolved in a BIOS update, I could avoid that warranty call and that inconvenience to my customer by putting the BIOS update on now. But what you choose to do is entirely up to you. I'm not suggesting that my way is right for all people. It's simply how I run my business and the reason why is here on the streaming computer. I'm going to open up a browser and we're going to go to the support page for this ASRock motherboard. So I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type in B650i. You can follow along with me. Lightning BIOS. And the first page that pops up, if you're using Google, should be ASRock's homepage for this motherboard. Now, there's always two support areas here. There's a support usually up top, and there's a support down below. The support down below is for this board, okay? So we're gonna go to support down below, and you'll see the option for BIOS right here. So for under BIOS, you see it's got version 2.02, .02, and then 2.06 is a beta, and I don't want the beta. So right here, you'll see there's the instant flash, the BIOS flashback, which we exhibited and demonstrated on the MSI motherboard. I don't think we've done one on ASRock yet. But essentially, if you follow the same procedure that we showed with MSI, that's what we would use if the CPU was not being recognized. Since the CPU is recognized, we can just go to our global download here, and we're going to download a zip file. Then I'm going to grab a flash drive here out of my drawer. I use a very small flash drive, usually two or four gig capacity. And so I have these cheap flash drives that I use for BIOS flashing. I've got a, a bunch of them. For about $2.50 a piece when you buy 10. And I'm going to plug that here into the streamer because remember, we're using the streamer to download the files because we don't have that ability yet on here. So I'm going to just plug this in in the back. Don't mind me. Ugh. And it's a blank flash drive. I always use a blank flash drive so I don't accidentally pick the wrong file to flash. And then in my downloads directory, I'm going to find that zip file I just downloaded and extract it over to the zip drive. In this case, we just have one file and it's a .rom file. Take our flash drive now with our extracted BIOS from the zip file and plug it into any of the USB ports back here. So any of the USB ports is fine. And then up here under tool, we're going to look for a, a flash tool. Right here it says instant flash. Click that. Notice, please suspend BitLocker and any encryption or security relying on the TPM. Make sure that you've already stored and backed up the recovery key for BitLocker. If the recovery key is missing, well encryption is active, the data will stay encrypted and the system will not boot into the operating system. It is highly recommended to disable the FTPM before updating the BIOS. Otherwise, an unpredictable failure may occur. One of the benefits of doing this before we install the operating system is this doesn't apply to us. We, the encryption is part of the operating system if you enable it. And since we haven't installed the operating system, we can't possibly have encrypted anything. Therefore, this warning means nothing to us. So under continue, we click yes. Now it automatically finds, without me having to tell it, it finds the flash file all by itself. When you think about it, with the NVMe drive we installed being unformatted with no partition, there's nothing for it to see. And there is no other storage device for it to look at other than the flash drive. So it's kind of obvious when you think about it. So this is our file, it's version 2.02, .02, and that's the, exactly what we've extracted from the zip file we downloaded. Click the update button. It says, after you press yes, the system will automatically reboot. Please wait a few seconds and the BIOS update will continue. Do you wanna update the UEFI to this version? Yes, and leave it alone. 
At this point, you don't want to touch the keyboard, the mouse, you don't want to cut power. The system will turn itself off, which is what it's just done. That's why it says no signal. Then it turns itself back on again, just like it said it was going to. It's rebooting. And you may even hear the clicking of the power supply as it engages and disengages power from the board. As it starts up, now it will start to flash the BIOS. Hands off, don't touch it. <laughs> it does say warning, system firmware is being updated. The keyboard is locked. Do not turn the power off. Once the firmware update is completed, the system will automatically reboot. Okay, if you see, it says no signal. That's because the system's rebooting and the BIOS is still applying even though you don't see anything happening. So again, I can't stress enough, leave the system alone. It is going to finish processing and it may be once again retraining the CPU and the RAM with the new BIOS. So it, it may sit here up to three minutes or longer. There's nothing wrong. Now it is finally posted and we should take us back into the BIOS, which it has. At this point, I'm going to remove the flash drive. We are done with our BIOS flash and you can erase this flash drive. I will go to ex exit. We can load the defaults here, load UEFI defaults, and then save and exit. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up for today. Thank you so, so much. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Until next time, bye for now.